Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a pick a card reading focusing on what are your next steps. So what can you do to keep working on a project or next steps on a journey or on just your consciousness evolution or whatever it is that you're asking about. Um, and I think we'll get right into it. So go ahead and pick a card. We got one, two, three, and number four. And the links to the timestamps are down below in the description box. Okay, pile number one, welcome to your reading. Uh, yours starts off with the Nine of Swords. So you guys are working on breaking through like restrictive mental paradigms. Um, the Nine of Swords is always that, that card of nightmares. And in my experience, it is always brought on by like paranoid or compulsive thinking when you feel like you are, you know, just like this, you're being attacked, you're surrounded by all sides. And, you know, but these, these swords, for most of us, we're not actually getting beset upon by swords, we're being beset upon by our own thoughts, or sometimes the thoughts of others. But with the nine of swords, to me, it's more uh, your own internal kind of psychic attacks, um, that feeling of waking up in the night, uh, and just, you know, wishing that the floor would open up and, and swallow you. Um, and even if this is being caused by, or even if it's associated with kind of non-ideal life situations around you, uh, you might be thinking, oh, you know, I just need to fix this problem. I just need to get a better job. I just need to get a better place to live. I just need to get better friends and better relationship, all of that. You might sometimes feel that those things will be what will solve your problem and that you're in agony or you're suffering because of all of those external circumstances. But that's not really it. Um, really, the the struggle is the way you're facing those situations and that, you know, trying to remember that it is actually possible to sit in contentment and equanimity, even when you are in a less than ideal, you know, situation in your life, whether it's like the whole big picture of your life, or just if you're at a dinner party that you really don't want to be at, and you have to sit through that, uh, you'd have to sit through that table and, you know, sip your wine and make small talk. Um, you, you can do that if you let go of these these thoughts that are no longer serving you. So you guys need to identify the thoughts, the thought patterns, the thought structures, and just the mental habits, the belief systems, what, whatever it is that is holding you back and like literally making you suffer. And I, I personally, I really know how a, an attachment to mental structures, belief systems, and past paradigms of thought can like drag you down in the most unbelievable way and basically ruin your life when it's it's funny when you know the cause of your own demise is inside of your own head uh luckily you you guys are heading on to you know <laughs> greener pastures and you're making a complete 360 here uh you know the princess of cups um which is the page of page of cups uh her you know she's being you're going to be able to embody a, uh, for what you guys might be a completely new way of being, thinking from operating, not so much thinking, you're going to actually think less. You're going to be thinking less and feeling more. You're going to be t getting in touch with your your heart space, your intuition, um, however you want to think about it, your your right brain, your, your lunar capacities, you know, um, leaning more into a softer, more feeling and emotional based ways of being. And before, uh, if you've been going through the journey of the swords, you might've been feeling like that is not only is that a, a way that you didn't live before, you probably may have even looked down at people that were like that, but now you're starting to, to feel like you want to be, not that you necessarily want to let go of your mental intelligence or your uh, intellectual endeavors, but that you want to bring in and interweave in uh, a more, feelings-based approach to your life. And when you start this off, you're going to feel like a complete novice and a complete noob. You're not going to know how to do it. You're going to feel clumsy and embarrassed and awkward, um, trying to get in touch with your intuition and trying to listen to your heart. Um, but <laughs> it, it's going to absolutely work out for you because you you travel, uh, you know, really quickly from the princess of cups to the king of cups. You're going to be this guy, you know, look at him. He's celebrating. He's raising the chalice, you know, like toasting. Uh, his victory and he's 
it rising up out of the ocean here. This green and blue I really see is like waves. Uh, so you're going to be like, <laughs> even if it seems unbelievable now, maybe, you know, you're the kind of person who's incredibly analytical, incredibly scientific, incredibly left brain. Um, and you've really shunned, you know, almost like your feminine side. And this is even if you're a woman. And I think all of my viewers are women. <laughs> so uh, even for, like for women who have been almost more masculine or solar in approach to their life, you can get you can get reacquainted with your uh, with your, you know, your inner goddess, your inner feminine side. And uh, it's interesting to me that this pops up as the, the king of cups and not the king of uh, the queen of cups telling me that uh, you will be able to. This is not like a complete abandonment of your 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 intellectual life. It's going to be a braiding in of your intellectual and mental self with your newfound um, emotional self. So you guys are going to be rehabilitating your your emotional body, uh, which can come along with you know a spiritual evolution, a spiritual awakening, um, or man, uh, you guys might find yourselves crying, <laughs> crying like a lot. Uh, you know, every once in a while, you know, we go through those periods in life where let's almost like our tears get activated. Something will happen. Um, it can be something like completely out of the blue, uh, like, you know, almost like a leaf falling at your feet and it like activates your tears and you cry for like days and days and days. And, you know, <laughs> I remember once when I was 16, I hadn't cried for eight years. Um, and I opened up the fridge door to get some water, like out of the Brita filter or the Brita pitcher. And I just like burst into tears and I didn't stop crying for like five years. <laughs> and, uh, I don't necessarily think, you know, that you guys are going to have that extreme of an experience, but, um, really, if you haven't like had a good cry lately, like that's probably coming and it just like, let yourself sob into the pillow. Like it, it's fine. You know, you'll feel better for it and, uh, it'll help you, uh, you know, when you do these kind of paradigm shifts, you know, from swords to cups, you know, from left brain to right brain, you know, you start off like way over here and then you tip the scales way to the other extreme. And, but, you know, and for a minute there, you might be like, wow, I've gone completely off the deep end, but don't worry about it because you will come back to the center. You know, the scales will balance and you'll come back to your, uh, your equanimity and not even so much coming back to it. Cause it's almost like you're reaching it for the first time. So, uh, give yourself time, you know, for the scales to balance so that you can come back to your, your center point, really coming, finding your center point for the first time, because this is moving on from the Nine of Swords to the Prince of Cups and ultimately the King of Cups. You're you're rebalancing the, uh, you know, the two halves of your being, the yin and yang, the left brain and the right brain, the masculine and the feminine, all of those polarities that you can think of that are uh, opposites like that. Really, you know, I don't like so much using masculine and feminine because those words have gotten so <laughs> like loaded. Um, you know, maybe solar and lunar is a better way to think about it. Um, or, you know, really just swords and cups, swords and cups, guys. Um, and I think I'd like to pull a moon card for you, which seems fitting, seeing as uh, you're getting in touch with your, like, princess of cups has a moon, moon above her. Which card wants to come out here? A time to give rather than take a new moon in Virgo. Awesome. I mean, look how this green, which green, you know, symbolizing your, your heart chakra, your heart space. Same with this King of Cups over here. Um, and this is really, you know, when you're living in the swords, it's more of a, not necessarily selfish, definitely more of a self-centered energy where you're concerned about looking after yourself, which is, I mean, absolutely good, right? We need to serve ourselves before we can be of any use to anybody else, right? I will never tell, <laughs> tell people to, you know, focus on everybody else before you focus on yourself. I will always say focus on yourself first, right? Um, but here, you know, it's signaling that it's time for those scales to balance. And now you're going to be giving to other people, which is definitely what the cups do. You know, just think about what a cup, you know, a chalice means, uh, you know, like in medieval Europe, I mean, a lot of other cultures as well. Uh, you know, you would come out, usually like the, the, the lady of the household would come out with, with the cup and pass it around the, uh, uh, the table, you know, in the mead hall, and everybody, all the, you know, the warriors would take a sip out of, out of the cup. And that could be done in uh, different ceremonies, especially before a battle or the cup of parting. Um, so, you know, you are going to be almost watering the people around you, like literally and figuratively uh, uh, with this water energy you're tapping into with your emotions. And the 
new moon in Virgo. Virgo is obviously a very feminine uh, a sign and really tuning into like garden energy. Almost it, it feels like to me, you know, nurturing your garden, which includes not just you know, the plant, any plants in your garden, but the people around you and, you know, through feeding them with any plants you might be growing from your garden, but also, you know, uh, it's that, that little bit of being of service, but I feel like you guys can, uh, be of service because you have gotten yourselves to a position of, I don't, I don't really know what the, what the right word is. You, you guys have been cultivating your own inner strength your own mental strength and that's what's going to allow you to uh, kind of handle the almost the tumultuous waves that you might be going through while you you know while your tears are activated and while you're uh, going through this new transition here while you let the scales balance since you previously cultivated your mental strength you will have the strength you need to ride the waves as the scales balance I know I just repeated myself there but I that last sentence was, I think, a clear summation of what I was trying to say. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please, you know, comment uh, and subscribe if this resonated with you. This is a new project for me, so I'd really like to hear from anybody who is into this. Um, and thanks for tuning in. Okay, Pile 2, welcome to your reading. Uh, I almost don't believe how these cards laid out. I, 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 I love this. Do you, do you guys see this, uh, this ball here, this sphere, uh, the princess of pentacles is catching it. And, uh, I, I feel like it was just tossed to her, but then she's tossing it over here to the six of wands and this lady's catching it. Like not all these cards in the mystic Monday deck have these are, are like that. They're, they're not all throwing these balls around. Uh, she's catching it. And then you also have this uh, tiger over here with the strength card. And here it is in the background, almost like, you know, these girls are playing back here and it's flying over uh, this tiger. That is, maybe they don't know that that tiger is so, so close by. Um, so that was really cool. You don't often get cards, uh, like, literally interacting with each other like that. So I really see this as an opportunity is, like, literally being thrown your way. Like, you have a ball to catch. Uh, you know, something is going to come totally out of the blue for you. Um and as the princess of pentacles catching this uh catching this ball or seizing this opportunity you're gonna feel a little bit nervous and a little bit unprepared uh because the princess is the page um you're gonna feel unprepared for this and you're gonna feel nervous but you're also gonna feel like i can rise to the occasion occasion and like seize the day you know <laughs> a little bit of that uh carpe diem energy right like you, you you've got this you don't really know how you're gonna do it you don't know how it's gonna work out but you know your next step here is to definitely just to seize that uh, recognize it when it comes, you know, she could have just like let this ball that was being passed or like soar, soar by, right? Like fly by or she could have had a hit in her head, but you guys are going to catch it and it's going <laughs> to work out really well for you because uh, the six of wands. Um, so maybe the, this is going to be a project involving at least two people, maybe three. Uh, Or, or at least somebody is going to be really bringing this opportunity to your attention. You know, maybe like a previous, uh, somebody you used to work with, you know, could be like emailing you or you could run into them on the street and they could be like, hey, I got this uh, job opportunity or like, hey, you know, you want to be my band, <laughs> like something like that. Like somebody's going to come up and you might actually have to make a decision like really on the spot. Uh, so kind of think about, I think I would say like right now or, you know, after this video, uh, think about your your current trajectories and like speculate about what kind of directions you would be willing to to jump into if like something like literally like jumped into plopped into your lap like right now um i remember i have a i remember i'm, I'm really remembering really strongly this like odd memory i have of this professor uh she was a psychology professor um and she was you know we were talking about the difference between uh like fluid memory and crystal memory crystallized memory uh you know your crystallized memory being like you know facts and stuff that you've learned and they're really like in your long-term storage and uh oh it was intelligence it was crystallized intelligence and fluid intelligence which sort of the same thing but so your crystallized intelligence you know which is like things you know that they that like you develop that throughout your life and it stays solid and it stays good even into old age you know until you get any kind of you know cognitive decline you know diseases 
operate. But your fluid intelligence, uh, you know, peaks around like 25. And then by the time you're old, like, uh, you know, like my grandma, right? If I told her, <laughs> like, come on, come on, grandma, like, you know, uh, I'll buy you a bus ticket, like hop on the bus and, you know, ride the bus seven hours to come visit me. And she would be like traumatized, right? She like couldn't handle that. She couldn't just do that. But of course, when you're like 20, you know, hopping on a, like getting on a, like a long distance, like a Greyhound bus and like going to a different city or just like whatever it is, right? When you're, when you're younger, you can seize those opportunities because they feel like, like nothing. I mean, of course it's easier because you don't have like any responsibilities at home. Like you don't have a house and two dogs and all these bills and stuff, but still, uh, you want to, the, the reason this is relevant here is think about your fluid intelligence. Think about what you're willing to jump into and, uh, kind of be prepared for that. Cause I think you will be like totally jumping in to something. And if you're too, uh, nervous too scared uh, about unexpected adventures you know like like bilbo <laughs> you're about to have an, an unexpected journey um if all of that makes you makes you too nervous think about why that might be and maybe what you can do to uh kind of organize your life back home uh so that you can leave at the drop of the dime like maybe you do have kids or pets uh and i mean almost everybody has bills to some extent right you know you have your job you can't just necessarily get up and leave and i don't think this is necessarily a journey actually um, although it might involve a little bit of traveling and moving around, but, uh, think about what you can do in your life to kind of make contingency plans or just make your schedule and your situation more flexible so that you can be open to new possibilities as they come your way. And, and since this ends with the strength card, as you're working through whatever this new project is, um, you're going to be really transforming this energy of the princess of page into your inner strength, but you know, it's not going to necessarily be entirely smooth and easy, but it, the six of wands being such a card of victory. And I like that this card came up in the middle here because, uh, this is what I pulled for myself as my daily draw this morning on a different deck. But I was just thinking about how the six of wands is that, that card that is, uh, it, it's just good news. Like, the six of wands, I think of it as like the triumph card, you know, like a Roman general coming back to Rome after a victory at war. And, you know, they, they would triumph through the parade through the streets. Um, it's just victory. It's success. It's everything going well. Um, and I was actually thinking about how it's, it's almost like merely good. The card is like merely good news and good and success. And it, it almost feels like it's a really uncomplicated card in that aspect. A lot of the other good cards in the tarot have, you know, they're, they're, if, 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 ifs, ands, and buts, right? The Six of Wands is just good, which also also kind of makes it like less than interesting. Uh, but of course, when it pops up in a spread for you, you are always happy to see it because it's just good news. Um, so back to the strength card here. Um, man, this is such feminine energy. Look at all these girls and then the, then the tiger. So you might be tapping into your... Um, like your inner, inner feminine power, like your dark feminine magic. I keep uh, hearing everywhere lately about you know, how, how feminine, feminine power, like, you know, in an esoteric sense, not in like a, you know, 21st century political sense, um, in like an esoteric sense, the feminine power, you know, like the black side of the yin yang, uh, is like really dark, deep, magical power, deep and dark, like the ocean and, or, you know, like a tiger. So as you, uh, when this opportunity jumps out in front of you, when it falls into your hands and you have to grab it and then you have to jump in and pass it like a hot potato, and you're, when you're feeling all nervous and anxious and feeling like too much is happening too fast, just remember that this is going to play out with the Six of Wands, which is just the good news card, the success card, the triumph card, and that you're going to be embodying the energy of the tiger. This inner strength where, you know, you don't necessarily need to control, like you won't be controlling this tiger with a force of, uh, you know, with external force. You're not sitting here, you know, with this tiger in a collar and you're not, you know, you don't have like tasers and stuff and tranquilizers to tame this tiger. Um, the tiger is just going to be operating along with your intuition. You're going to flow together. You know, traditionally, uh, this, this would show a woman taming the lion. Um, but more that, you know, the lion has been tamed through her, through the power of her presence. But I almost feel here that you are going to be the tiger. And I think I'll leave that at that and pull one card for you guys. 
I want to pull it out of the uh, star seed oracle. I already gave this a really good shuffle before it. I'll give it just a little shuffle here. Okay. We the Hathors. Deep love, mother's milk, birth as a portal. Wow, so that absolutely goes along with all of this feminine energy we have here. I'd actually like to read you a little excerpt from the book on this card because this is a new deck, uh, like just published, and I actually haven't pulled this card for myself, so I'm not too familiar with it. Um, so I'm just going to read you a little bit here. Uh, it says, this is a card of extreme potency, of femininity, of creation, and of birth. You're being called to mother yourself and others too, to surrender to your sacred femininity, to create and surrender to your own creations, to hold and to be held. You may be going through a transition right now, moving from one way of being to another. If so, you're being reminded that you're cradled in a sacred container, that you're more held than you can possibly imagine, and that you have access to more love than your heart can bear. That's right, guys. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I love how that syncs up with all of this feminine energy with this idea of, you know, I was just talking about the feminine power being that deep, deep ocean, um, and that you're going to have to surrender to this uh, kind of, you know, flow of events that are going to fall into your lap and that you're going to be um, integrating this, you know, feminine cat energy, feline, feline, feminine energy. Whew. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I don't think there's too much else to say for you guys, except for, I guess, to sum up your next steps would be to surrender to your divine feminine energy. And as you're moving through this, uh, as you're seizing this opportunity and moving through this transition, um, think about how, or not so much think, actually feel, feel how you can work through this and make the best of your new endeavor by tapping into the deep, deep powers of your, your, your feminine side. Re uh, and remember the Hathors in the tiger as you're doing this. So, that's it. And so thank you, Pile 2, for tuning in. Uh, please leave me a comment or subscribe if you really resonated with this. This is a new project for me, so I'd really like to hear from anybody who's into this. Um, so I hope to see you guys again soon. Okay, Pile 3, welcome to your reading. You guys got three major arcana popped right out, and <laughs> uh, this, is, this is just... I mean, if you guys are single and looking to not be single, this is just... I mean, it couldn't be any better news than this. You got your first card up is the Hermit. And this Hermit, as you can see, she's not so much, you know, like being a bear, bearing a lantern out in the wilderness. It, you know, not so much bearing light anywhere. Uh, she's trapped. She's like trapped, like literally trapped in a box. Um, so I would actually interpret this as a bit of a departure from the uh, from the typical hermit, uh, this is absolutely, um, she's not enjoying being a hermit. Maybe she used to, uh, but she's starting to feel like that this is not, uh, not what she had expected, or maybe she's just getting tired of it. I'm really reminded of, uh, Zarathustra in, you know, Nietzsche's The Spake Zarathustra, how it starts off and as, uh, you know, he lived in the wilderness alone on top of a mountain for 10 years and it was everything he ever could imagine and it was awesome and he didn't have to deal with any people. And he just loved his solitude being a hermit out there all by himself until one day he basically uh, had enough. He got bored and he came down out of the mountain. He started his down going. <laughs> so if you guys haven't read Nietzsche, I mean, I know like Nietzsche seems really controversial. And <sighs> all I have to say about that is uh, most of the people who talk about Nietzsche, especially talk about him like in a hateful way, haven't read anything he's ever written. And even those who have read it haven't understood it. And I mean, I get it because he's one of like the most difficult people to read. I've actually been reading, you know, the spake Zarathustra for like a year <laughs> and, and I still haven't gotten through it because I read it in bits and pieces. The crazy thing is that, uh, you know, you read like a sentence of Nietzsche or like a paragraph and it's like, whoa, it's like it's like you read a whole book of some other author and he got it all down into a paragraph. So trying to get through a chapter is like it's so thick. You don't even you don't you could you could read just like a sentence a day of, of that book. But um wow okay i really wanted to talk about nietzsche for some reason uh, that's must be relevant to somebody so if you've been thinking about nietzsche or, or, or especially if you have like 
if I said that and you got like triggered, you might want to go check him out because uh, if anything is really like triggering you like that, um, go go read go read Nietzsche and you know form your own opinions uh, before you you know feel like that he's you know this evil horrible guy that uh, everybody has been misinterpreting you know since he would since he ever wrote his first sentence. Um, okay, uh, back to this hermit lady. Um, and okay, I don't want to make the whole reading like just about romance, you know, because we have the hermit, the hanged woman, and the lovers. So clearly we have this uh, like path of going from, you know, <laughs> to being single, to being, a re to finding your soulmate, to being in a relationship, to being these happy, uh, um, these lovebirds here. Uh, but that's not, uh, that's not even the most significant way that this goes. This is, this is also your your spiritual evolution, your, your, the journey of your consciousness as you continue to evolve. Um, what I really feel also about this hermit is that, uh, you know, say you didn't, uh, you never used to think that you had a soul, that you were, you know, you thought that this was just, this was it, this body, this life was it, what I could see was it. Um, and for a long time, uh, you thought that was okay. You thought that was good. You even were, were into that. Um, and then that started to really gall. It started to feel like you, you, you were trapped and that you wanted, you know, that feeling of, you know, is there more to life than this? That's how I feel this hermit, uh, is feeling. And, uh, if, so moving on from that feeling, you, you are beginning the journey of your consciousness back to reconnecting, uh, you know, to higher dimensions, to aliens, if you're into that, um, you know, back to whatever deities uh, you might, you know, work with or worship in your spiritual practices um, or connecting just like straight back to source. Um, but this isn't, so you're on your journey of your spiritual or your consciousness unfoldment. You're unfolding, you know, like the, the petals of the lotus. Um, and this isn't going to happen right away, like all at once. Got the hanged man or the hanged woman here. So I, cause, cause this whole, this whole journey here, uh, was me like last year. So I know how this game goes. And when you're getting the hanged man, that is just a sign that, you know, you might be frustrated and you might be like, okay, you know, I want, I want my soulmate to show up. You know, I want proof there is, you know, life after death. Um, I want to, you know, <laughs> break out of the matrix and, you know, uh, braid in my fifth dimensional consciousness. You know, I want to talk to angels, you know, I want, you know, to levitate and break out my psychic powers. Like, you know, you're sitting here going like, I want all of this. Like I want it all right. Like that queen song. I want it all. You want all of it. Uh, but you're not going to get it. Not quite yet because you need to gain the knowledge of the runes. This is, you know, symbolizing Odin, uh, in that myth where, you know, uh, he's looking for, what do they call it? The knowledge of the runes or the wisdom of the runes. Um, and, you know, so he stabs a sword in his side and, you know, most uh, decks don't show like the spear sticking out of uh, the hanged man's side. But, you know, Odin stabs himself in the side and hangs himself upside down for like 10 days. And that is, you know, the thing he has to lose, the thing he has to give up. And also, you know, representing like a deep, deep meditative state where, you know, really he's having a near death experience and, that is creating the container for him to come back. And when he comes back, you know, to the land of the living, um, he has been, he has gained the knowledge of the runes. And so now he can read, uh, and not only that, he can record information and he has access to, you know, what is, what is writing to us down here in third density? That is our, you know, before we had computers, that was our only way of encoding information, uh, and, and giving it to people without actually coming in, you know, into personal contact and having to relay oral traditions to each other. So you have to go into this like deep, deep meditative state. I mean, if you feel like if you meditate, do more of that. If you don't meditate, think about meditating. Although, you know, you don't, you never need to be meditating, but that definitely like greases the wheels and makes this whole spiritual or consciousness evolution journey, uh, that it makes it so much easier. Meditating can, it creates the container for all of this uh, information to come down into you and help you evolve. Um, so I really recommend it. <laughs> um, and, but once you get through this like cocooning phase, once you're done hanging upside down in the tree, you know, meditating and, uh, you know, having your out of body experiences, um, then you're going to come into, I mean, this absolutely can manifest as a, uh, 
as your soulmate, as your twin flame, as your partner. You can manifest this externally, you know, as people, you can manifest this as some kind of wonderful new, uh, like physical paradigm in, in your, in your reality. Um, but mostly this all, the lovers really symbolizes your, your internal alchemy where you will be, you know, retrieving pieces of your soul, bringing in, uh, aspects of your higher self, uh, to come hang out here, you know, with you in your, in your, <laughs> in your body, it's your, you're alchemizing yourself to get more aligned. You know, you'll find you guys will probably start uh, getting in, getting into like energy work with your chakras or even dismantling your chakra system if, uh, if you go that far down that road. And all of that will help you, your subtle bodies will be getting aligned, your energy centers will be getting aligned, everything will be working out so that you will be, you'll become, you know, the axis mundi, you'll be your own conduit from the center of the earth up to source. <laughs> so the that's a really uh let me get this focused that is a really deep intense reading that to get out of three cards but that's what happens when you pop up three major arcana especially th these three in this order so like you guys are i would say like in six months you're going to look back on your lives and and look back on your consciousness, look back on yourself, and you're not going to believe the journey and the transitions and just the leaps and leaps and bounds that you've been through between now and then, and especially in another year, you're going to be looking back and be like, wow, it's almost like I was a different person. I can't believe that my, I can't believe I was so trapped. I can't believe I was that limited. I can't believe I was in that much of a state of amnesia, you know, so, but you're going to have to be a little patient. Uh, well, well, you unfold because your, unf your unfoldment, I mean, this is, and really this energy is going to last the rest of this incarnation. Um, you know, every time you think you're going to plateau and every time you think your journey is over, it's just going to like, like reamp up. It's just going to re-up and it's just going to, th this is it. This is it guys. The hermit, the hanged woman and the lovers, this is your energy for forever. Because <laughs> as soon as you tap into this level of transformation, it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. You just keep transforming, uh, you know, until, you know, one day <laughs> you'll become all that there is. Okay. Um, I don't want to say too much more about that, but I do want to pull uh, one Starseed Oracle card. The Cosmic Heart. Devotion, potency, make your life a moving prayer. abs fucking lutely guys. Oh my God. <laughs> make your life a moving prayer. That, that's exactly what I was talking about. If, you know, once you're tapping into this level of transformation, it doesn't, it doesn't go away and you're living it for the rest of forever. Um, and the Cosmic Heart, you know, that's almost like, you know, the heart chakra of the entire, you know, multiverse, the whole omniverse, all that is the center of all of it, uh, where all of it flows from. That's what you're tapping into. And that's how you're going to be um, experiencing this. You're going to be moving not just from your own heart space, but from, you know, the heart space of all that there is. And, you know, it, it's going to be taking you from this space of isolation to this space of just complete alignment with yourself and feeling of oneness and love for others. You know, you, you guys might have an experience, whether, you know, sober or not. And, you know, if you take plant medicine or anything really to have this kind of experience, it, if you experience uh, feeling unconditional love for all that is or that feeling of oneness uh where everybody where you you realize that or it's not even a realization it's a feeling you feel that everybody is one <laughs> is one one being one person uh you know if you take some lsd you'll definitely <laughs> have that experience um but it even goes beyond other humans you know you'll feel a sense of oneness between you and a rock for example um that's that's the kind of experiences you guys are going to be having and 
even and those those feelings of oneness don't need to manifest in that emotional way um in my experience you know they manifest in that emotional feeling of love and oneness for people who are inclined to feeling feeling their way uh through things other people if you're more of a intellectual mental type left brain type of person you know you will have other ways of experiencing it experiencing it you will you will know you will understand on a deep wise uh intellectual level how everything is one is is one and it is potent and I, that's that's really all i'd like to say here um i don't want to ha hammer on this too much because this these four cards are just they're potent that that's all there is to say about it so congratulations guys for stepping up and stepping into this transformation it's going to just knock your socks off <laughs> uh, so please comment and subscribe uh, if this resonated with you this is a new project for me so i'd really like to hear from anybody who is uh, tuning into this and uh, i see you guys uh, out in the ether okay pile four welcome to your reading um the first thing that jumps out here is obviously all of this orange and yellow uh really reminded me of you know your your lower chakras and you know and with the sacral chakra it can always come that little bit of power struggle you know if if that that energy center isn't really you know meant to be conflict energy but it can be if things are kind of out of whack and with the knight of wands and the nine of wands here I feel like you guys have been a little bit embattled. <laughs> not not really that you've been in like an interpersonal conflict situation. Uh, more just that like life has been kind of beating you around. You know, like maybe you've been in school and, you know, for the last five years, you know, you've been doing nothing but, you know, writing papers and taking exams. And you're just you just you just had enough. Right. Like you've really had to pull out your magic wand and use all of your resources as you charged ahead to kind of keep up with the rat race and to manifest everything along your way and you've been charging around like a chicken with your head cut off and with your nine of wands you know this is almost like you know it's your last semester before graduation and it's just you're holding your last wand and you know the ten of wands is coming which is that card of burden but also harvest so you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel but like you're fucking tired like you're almost thinking like was well, was all of this even worth it <laughs> like i i am so done like i feel like you guys are just you're done and even here where you know this orange energy from the knight of wands is almost like fading it's fading out because you guys are tired you're making your last stand here it's the last gasp like photo and sam um you know heading up mount doom <laughs> um so oh, but the the good news here is that the chariot is on the horizon and look at this look how happy this person is her chariot isn't just like charging ahead over over you know the deserts of egypt she is flying she has literally taken off in a huge <laughs> in a huge way and she's got her arms in the air just like woohoo you know like almost like she's riding a roller coaster but she is so happy to be doing this Okay, uh, sorry about the abrupt transition there, but it was actually really synchronous and kind of hilariously relevant. Um, my husband called me and I had to answer because uh, sometimes he has, with his job, he has to call me and I have to like urgently help him with something. It's too too complicated to go into the details about his job, but uh, that's what happened. That's why I really had to pick up the phone. And uh, this reading like could have been for him. <laughs> I think I think it is for him really and you know with anybody who's also operating on his like resonance bandwidth um because he called me up and was all like well mostly good news <laughs> and he sounded completely exhausted because I mean I know he hasn't he's been working like really really hard you know 60 70 80 hour work weeks and he didn't he hasn't been getting enough sleep and uh he was just totally exhausted and he's absolutely at this stage of you know the last straw the last gasp and uh but he was calling me with his good news basically saying that he has a lot more work to do this week um but it's not going to be as bad as he thought and you know there's there's light at the end of the tunnel and he's actually at this phase where in 16 weeks he's going to have completed like a major project a mail a major milestone in like life um and he's gonna not only um, 
going to get a bonus from work. He's going to also have some time off and he's going to be able to just really enjoy the fruit of his labors, you know, in 16 weeks. Cause you know, the countdown is on, <laughs> he's going to be this lady on the chariot. He's going to charge off into the sunset and he's going to, you know, I think we're going to go to Vegas and have a good old time. So that is how this reading is apparently relevant to, you know, our life. Um, <laughs> And I think it's just really safe to say that uh, whoever picked pile four, and it's funny to me that this is pile four, like the last pile, this is the, the final pile. You guys are feeling that you've been overworked for a really long time. Um, but in the, in the like sort of near future, like it's not like it's going to be tomorrow, um, you know, but in a couple of months, a few months from now, definitely sometime this year, you guys are, you guys are going to get a break and you guys are going to be launching like, graduating university and launching off into, you know, whether you're going to go backpacking around India or whether you're launching into your career. Uh, however it is that you want to be launching, you're going to be launched. And all of this hard work, all of this struggle and stress is going to be over. Uh, and it's not only will it be worth it because you'll have whatever it is that you've been working for, whether it's financial stability, you know, a, a career move, you know, just finishing your education, uh, However, it's manifesting for you. However, this energy is working through your life. It'll it'll be worth it, uh, and you'll be able to reap the rewards of all of your hard work and all of the actual struggle and stress of it. Um, will kind of recede into your memory, and you know you won't be focusing on that anymore. It'll recede, and you won't be traumatized from it. You'll be you know flying through the air. So it's all going to be worth it, and you know sooner or later. And I feel like this is kind of a mid-range projection. Like this isn't years from now, but it also isn't a few days from now. We're talking, you know, in like a, I think I feel like a few months is when this is going to work out for you. Um, from whenever you're watching this, that I would just say, well, you guys are in this kind of struggle and stress and just exhaustion place. Just I I want you to like literally like look at this chariot card, look at this girl. And with her hands in the air, flying through the air, just soaring up above all the people down below. She's even higher than the mountains and she's launched and she's just letting loose and just screaming and having a wonderful time. Remember that. Remember her because you're going to be here. You're going to make it through, you know, whatever it is that you're struggling through. You're going to make it through your last stand. You know, the ring is going to go into the fire and, you know, the Dark Lord will be defeated. <laughs> So I'm, I'm glad that, you know, to be able to give you guys a little bit of good news here. And I would just like to pull one uh, moon card for you guys. I'm going to just stick together and give me two. Okay. Work through your fears, new moon in Scorpio. Beautiful. I know for my husband, this <laughs> absolutely applies to him because for him, this uh, having to commit to this like major work project he's been doing uh, is actually been something he's been really terrified of because he's not the kind of guy who really does like he's a free spirit, right? He doesn't he's actually always been self-employed uh, and did really well with that. And then he went he went he got this new he made like a new career move got this job and has really taken a lot of work and he's had to sacrifice all of his free time, all of his time with his family. And that's all been really hard on him. And uh, more than that, it's not just been hard because it's been tiring and stressful. It's been hard because that like having to commit that much of himself to doing all of this work for this like external project is actually something he's afraid of. So I think the same thing applies for you guys. I, I'm talking about him, I think, just because that you know, it's the al it's the allegory that I'm familiar with here. You guys are going through the same kind of energy, all of the details will be different, you know, for everybody, but, uh, whatever you've been working on has probably been something that you've been afraid of committing to, or you've just been afraid of in general. Like maybe you've been working on a project that's involved a lot of public speaking and you're terrified of public speaking. Right. Um, so maybe that's been the reason for you guys to do this in order to face your fears. And yeah, I, th <laughs> I just kind of felt, uh, everything just kind of pinch off and close. So I think that's, that's basically the end of your reading. I'm not getting anything else here. I would just say, you know, if you're sitting in there in the dark, you know, afraid of clowns and there's a clown over there, like whatever it is, if you're in the middle of facing your fear, just always, always come back to this chariot because this is your future. This is where you're going. And that's going to be the end of your reading and the end of the video. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Please leave me a comment or subscribe if you 
uh, resonated with this. This is a new project for me, so I'd really like to hear from anybody who is tuning in. Um, I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.